Midterm elections. Getting dark earlier and earlier. Mass shootings, pipe bombs. The perennials, the undone laundry, the dishes in the sink, the homework, the long lists that keep getting longer, grumpy partners, grumpy children, grumpy parents, marriages and relationships that make you feel like you live in a bell jar. You can't get out and you can't get in. And there you are. If any of you is in a better mood than I am, I hereby invite you to give this sermon. <laughs> Anybody? Come on, come on, come on. If, is my uh, doom and gloom just too much for you? Thank you. <laughs> Tough luck. <laughs> um, I do confess to being a little numb. Maybe a lot numb, but I'll call it a little numb just to keep Keen happy. It's like I got off the plane on the wrong planet and my luggage didn't arrive. Or I woke up and I was in somebody else's house and couldn't figure out what I was doing there. Or I woke up and I was in the Hotel California and everything seemed eerily happy and eerily eerie. Or, as Barbara Streisand puts it, my depression caught a depression. <laughs> or, as poet laureate Tracy Smith puts it, in a poem, she's watching an old, quote, bag lady trudge down the street, picking up her bags and going forward two or three at a time. And she says, I'm with you the poet laureate of the United States of America. I'm with you four out of five days. And I only continue to walk on out of spite. Probably because of this moodiness, I really love Mazur's poem about baseball. It is exactly parallel to the structure of the text we read today, and I'm going to point you to their structure. She sees that the pitcher who was a great pitcher all season has gone into a slump at just the wrong time. She sees that the hitter who was a great hitter all season can't find the strike zone, can't find a ball. And she also knows our own rage at our own selves for disappointing our own selves and uses baseball as a way to name that. And then she says that the structure of baseball, like the structure of the gospel, is one that contains surprises, reversals, and mysteries, that it is literally structured to show up as a reversal. So, just as we make costly mistakes, we also find ourselves every now and then doing something right by mistake or accident or because we didn't go to batting practice and that was the day we hit the homer just as they were about to put us on the sideline for the season. See, usually we don't think that somebody is going to reverse field somewhere on the field and that that is what will keep us going. St. Paul said it very well long ago, the good that I would not do, I do, and the evil that I would not do, I do. This is not a new problem. <laughs> it's got a several thousand year pedigree. So I know God will forgive me for being so numb. I know God will forgive me for being so numb eventually. I know it. I just wish I would let her. 
And Mazur helps me just by the words, the firm structure with the mystery of accidents always contained. The mystery of structure with the, the firm structure with the mystery of accidents always contained. So listen to the long passage that Craig read so beautifully as a testimony to the firm structure of mystery with accidents always contained within it. The kid who is least likely to make the big hit will probably do so. The elections everyone is trying to predict statistically with such great care will probably turn out sort of that way and there will also be big surprises. The statisticians will not control the outcome. See, even a big act of terror in a synagogue like last week brought a lot of Jews and Christians back to synagogue this last Friday night. Fascinating that congregations all over this great city were packed with Jews and Christians and Muslims. If you had tried to make that happen for a hundred years, you couldn't do it. Even that time the guy drove into the bike path on the West Side Highway didn't stop today's marathon. Even that shooting in West Palm at a high school, somehow the high schools get to me worse than the sacred sites. I don't know why. There's so many. And does it matter which bothers you the most? I don't know. That awful event in West Palm at the high school created activists who are surprising themselves and us. Even 9-11, people who usually bumped into you and knocked you over in the subway and then cursed you for being in their way, we're carrying each other's bags out of the subways. Weird, right? So the text has the same structure as this baseball. It tells us that we're supposed to build things up and not tear things down. We're supposed to be hopeful. We were created to be good. We're, be, we're supposed to play offense and not defense in the world and act with hope all the time, and then guess what? We didn't. And along comes an angry God in about the fourth verse and says, what is it with you people? I made you. What are you doing with yourselves? Oh, we're sitting around wondering about whether the pitcher's any good. We're sitting around wondering whether, whether the catcher can hit. We have a lot of issues with the management. If only we had better management, imagine how great America could be or how many games our team could win. And then right in the middle of the text, God makes a decision. God says, I will not confuse them forever, nor will I always be angry. God becomes the accidental and surely undeserved mystery in the structure of life. Eugene Peterson, how many of you know who he is, wrote the book, translated the gospel from Koine Greek into a biblical translation that was very modern and up to date, it's called The Message, and he did it to create a vernacular for scripture. He did it for two audiences, a parish pastor in Baltimore. He died just last week at his home in Montana. He rewrote all the scriptures in a vernacular because he said those of us who have heard them too often find the language that Craig just read just too funny. We don't quite get it. And those who've never heard it are never going to listen to that language. <laughs> so he rewrote. So I spent some writing retreats with him a while back, and it was just so wonderful. He would make us take a scripture and rewrite it. And it had to be as vernacular as possible. So I'm going to give you that long text. Here it goes. You messed up. And then you messed up again. And then you started to believe that you were a mess. 
And then you started to believe that everybody else was a mess. Your BS caused you to put obstacles in front of each other just to prove how right you were about how everything had gone so wrong. You placed one negative thought after another into the universe and you really pissed me off. I created you. I made you. I wanted to have fun with you. I wanted you to be happy. Instead, I have a lot of whining and crying and impotence and fibrility and fragility. Seriously, I could walk out on you right now and you would never know the difference because you don't even know I'm here now. So why am I bothering to hang around? I could just leave you cringing in your well-accessorized corner and hiding under your comforter in your really comfy bed. But instead, I'm going to surprise you. I'm going to stop being angry at you the way you always want me to be angry, the way you set me up to be angry. I'm going to give you another chance to be peaceful. I'm going to restore praise to your chapped lips. I'm going to make your heart grateful again, and then maybe you'll win a game or two for your own joy and the rest of my people. Just maybe. But you're not stopping me from loving you by your stupidity. Now, if you don't like the scopper version of the text and its twists and turns, or if baseball is not your thing, stick with what you sang so beautifully, the Hotel California. <laughs> you can always check out but you can never leave behind the love of God for you, for me, and for our numb. Amen. <laughs>